All right, guys. Um, here is the tutorial that we went over uh, last week. Um, to start, uh, I, I'm going to show you what we had done in um, Illustrator to basically have like a setup for our measurements. So I showed you how I had uh, created the fold that I asked all of you to do. Um, and then have the measurements all set in that fold. Um, so then the easiest way, well, there's two ways. The one way that you can do it is um, setting up the sizes in, in design, I mean, uh, in Illustrator, and dragging it, which I believe I already did here. Um, the other way is to do it right in, um, InDesign itself. So here are my individual um, sizes that I would drag into my uh, file um, in InDesign and then I would drag guides from the ruler to the edge. So you can see if I pull all of these into my InDesign file I can then have it set up right in the middle, ungroup, and then I would pull guides all the way into here. All right. You can also do this in InDesign by creating rectangles and then changing the size of the rectangles up here. So let me get this out of Pika, um, put into inches, and then you can see you have the inches up here. If you keep it in points, you would have points up here. All right. So depending on what you prefer to use as your measurement um, is what you would have these rulers by clicking on the right right click on the ruler itself and changing the sizes okay once you have your your guides all set up um, you can see here that we have our bleeds just like we've had in every single project um, but you'd also want to make sure you include a uh, margin as well all right um, you can draw in more guides, uh, keeping everything away. So if you want to keep everything away, um, say 0.25 inches, where are we? So I'm going to drag this right to the edge, and then I can pull in more guides, like so. So this is how you would end up setting up your interior margins as well. All right? All the way around. Um, now, one of the things that I did, did explain was, in my case, I wanted to have a double gatefold where this folds in on itself. So this basically comes in like so, and then this comes like this, and then the whole these fold in together as well. You wanna make sure you have um, a gap in between any kind of major folding that you have. Even if you have a, a simple tri-fold, you'd wanna make sure the interior panel that's folding into itself is not the same width as a panel that it's going into because the paper will pinch and then um, your folding will be off. So uh, just make sure you keep, as you have these different folds, you wanna make sure you have a little bit of space and it's not much, you know, like a 16th of an inch is all you really need. All right, okay. Um, so now bringing in photos into um, the InDesign file. So the easiest way to do this is by having the file set up here, uh, your InDesign file, and then dragging uh, from your folder. Uh, so if you end up having uh, everything inside a folder or your desktop or whatever, however you're working to have all your files, you simply drag and then you can either click once and this creates the size that the maximum size it can be. If you have it set up at 300, um, you can click and drag. 
and you can see you click and drag and create whatever size you want. In InDesign, remember, the, um, you have two, basically two boxes. You have, you know, this outside interior box that has your image sitting inside it. And then you have the actual box itself that is the image. All right. So everything in InDesign is always going to have this um, exterior box when you bring something in. Now, you have to, like, you know, I mentioned before, you have to stay very um, organized because all of your images are linked, all right? And you can see here, I have this sitting here. It tells me, um, you know, it, very important. It was set up to 300 DPI. Um, the effective DPI is 496 because I made it a lot smaller than what it was. You know, when... I had brought it in and just double and just clicked on the screen. You can see it was brought in that's 300. So you want to make sure you always stay at 300 and not have it become bigger than this because as it gets bigger, it will become pixelated when it prints. And you can see here the effective DPI is now 186. All right. Um, now, what happens if you bring something in and you're working on it? And then you save it and then you get rid of this. So, so this is your file that you're working on and you save it, but you don't save the photo. All right, so um, if I was even to move it into a different location or if I deleted it, the next time I come into my InDesign file, I'm going to have an issue with this. And you can see right now I have this question mark. And basically it's telling me that you know, the path to this is now gone. All right, before it was, um, my path was to my desktop and now it's not there. And I even have a question mark. So if that happens to you, you cannot print. You can't export to PDF. You can't do anything with this file until you bring that photo back to where it was. And now you can see everything's fine. No issues, no concerns, and you're good. Now, when you want to bring in an Illustrator file, um, you can save it as an EPS or a PDF and do the exact same thing as with the photos. Or you can click and drag into your file. And so now this becomes part of InDesign. You can see there's no link, all right? Um, this, I mean, there's obviously advantages and disadvantages. So the advantages, it's now part of the file. You don't have to worry about it. You can, there's a little bit more things you can do with design when you bring in an Illustrator file. But the disadvantage is file size is going to go up. Um, InDesign is developed for a very large multi page um, layout, you know, 100 page, 200 page magazine, brochure. Um, and as you bring in more and more information embedded into the file, the higher the file size becomes. Um, for this project, and just doing a simple uh, two-page um, brochure, you're not going to have that problem whatsoever. So by dragging directly from Illustrator into your layout, <clears throat> it's definitely the way to go if you're doing it um, with illustrations. Do not, please do not open up a photo in Illustrator and then drag it over. That is not going to work. This is strictly for vector artwork that you want to pull in. All right. Okay. Uh, adding text. So um, we talked about how it was exactly the same basically from Illustrator. When you click and drag and you have a text box and you bring text in to that text box. Um, I believe I had set up. <laughs> yes. So you can see here, everything has a text box, right? You can't simply just click on the type tool and click on the screen and start typing. That's not going to work that way. Everything sits on it, sits inside a text box. And for this project, you can have everything sit inside one text box like this or you can have it broken out into individual text boxes for each section, all right? Both ways are gonna give you the same, um, the same result, uh, but you do end up having a little bit more 
freedom to move things around if you have it in separate text boxes. All right. Um, when you're adding a paragraph worth of text, you want to make sure that um, they're linked. So in this case here, you can see this type goes into this. So as that text um, ends on this column, it continues over there. So that's by having two separate columns. So let's do this. And then you can see you have a little red box right here. You click and you click and drag. And now that text spills over there. You don't want to have a lot of separate text boxes when you're doing paragraph worth of text. Because if you end up having to remove a paragraph or a sentence and move things around, you want that flow to continue and not have you know multiple pages of text that you now need to go in and spend time redoing that you've already done. All right. Um, all right. The size, the width. Now, there is a comfortable width of a uh, text box that you need to do. Um, you don't ever want to have something that is too short of a text, characters per line, because then it becomes very, um, very difficult to read. Our eyes get really annoyed when we have something that's too narrow. And then on the, on the same um, opposite end, you don't want anything too long. All right. Um, you don't want to have text that, you know, as you come to the end, it's difficult to backtrack to where it was. And there's always like that, you know, it's not like an exact science, but generally speaking, you know, you want to hit right around that 70 uh, character per line. That's like the ideal uh, width. And when you, if you have it longer than that, like say when you're doing like a term paper, then you have to increase the letting, which is, you know, like when you create double spacing, um, that's what you would do if you have to have it longer. In page layout and design, you know, you want to try and hit that sweet spot of how many characters per line. Now, the easiest way to do it is figure out what type size you're doing. In this case, we're using 11 points. And you want to create a um, the text box set to a certain size. So you, you can take like a rectangle here, click, and you double basically what your type size is and use it as a pica. Pica is a different, um, uh, different um, measurement for a page layout. So if we're using um, 11 points, then we're going to do um, 22 pica. So 22p, uh, the height is right now insignificant. So this right here, this width, is the ideal width of um, what, we, what we want to be doing, what we want to have this type size for this type size to be set at. All right, so it's... This we can copy, come in here, paste. So now that's the ideal width. The absolute longest is by um, multiplying this width, let me bring that back, by um, 1.5. All right, so it's you know basically adding another half of this will be the absolute longest. So if you have a different fold, you know, in my case, um, this sits perfectly inside this fold, but if you have a different fold that would. Um, warrant a wider um, text box, then you can only go another 50% um, uh, uh, bigger than that, okay? Um, okay, let's delete this. Then we can pull this back in. All right. Um, so like I said uh, in the handout, you want your copy text, which is this um, copy text or on your body uh, text, it's got to be at least 200 words for that section, and it can't be any more than 11 points. All right, uh, it may drop to 10 points, um, but 11 is really what, where you want to be. Um, this text here, the description text that you need to do, um, right now you can see I have it set up to 10 points, and then 
um, top is 17 points, and then I think this I dropped down to nine points. So, you know, just like in Project Two, you will be creating styles for all of your items, and you need to stay consistent. So you you know you're gonna to want to figure out what the names of your items are, figure out what is the best way forward for all of them combined. So this way they're sitting there and there is some sort of consistency in your layout. All right, uh, yes. All right, so the other way, so say you, you have a different layout. Um, like, let me get rid of this. Where's my guys lock? All right, so say you don't want to have that text box. Um, linking from one to the other and you still want two columns there is another way over here that you can increase this to multiple columns in your layout um, both ways are fine uh, there is no one correct way to do it um, this way here is obviously a lot easier because now you're just clicking a, a button to create the two columns but you have more control of your layout by having the two separate columns as two separate um, text boxes all right, but depending on your layout, depending on how you're moving forward with your design, you know, you may end up wanting to use this method instead. All right, um, just like in Illustrator, you know, if you want to have um, left alignment, you have the center, uh, right, and then you have this justified type. Now, you want to be careful of justified text. You can see here, this is, strangely causing an issue um, and how you have this text sitting here um, that causes like these awkward spaces all right see this here you, you can't have this text doing this so there are many times in a layout where uh, justified type will not work all right um, these are called rivers you, you do not want this okay um, you also, if you do just justify type, there was this option that we went over in Illustrator about hanging punctuation. And you can see, you know, the punctuation right here is sitting on the inside of our text box. And it causes an issue with the readability or the cleanliness of this line of text. So if we go up to view, extras, hide frame edges, you can see without that line, the our eye indents every time that there is um, a punctuation all right so if we go to our um, optical margin alignment which is underneath story you click this it pushes your punctuation out of that line all right so now our eye sees a, a straighter line going down with that text all right so you want to make sure if you use um, justify type you use that option all right okay the other thing that you want to watch for is widows and orphans so I'm gonna try and get them to show up so this way all right There we go. So right here, insects. So this here, you cannot have. You cannot have just one word sitting on a line all by itself. So you'd have to like figure out a way to either change the width of your um, design, or you end up going in and trying to add a return to drop that in. So this way you end up having at least two lines. Uh, I'm sorry, two words on that line. All right. Um, honestly, ideally, like, you know, even though this is two, it's still very short. So you'd want to have more drop down, right? Because you just don't want all this negative space to sit here. Also, what you cannot have is this. You can't have one line going to the next column, all right? So you can't have that either. And then the other extreme is you cannot have one line of a sentence or a paragraph start and then the rest of it 
follow on the next column. So you can't have just this one element sit all by itself, whether it's the beginning or the end of that column or paragraph. All right, so those have to be addressed and fixed. Um, when you have left aligned text, you want to avoid having anything that has like a weird shape, all right? Um, you want to make sure everything has like this continuous jaggedness of going in and out, in and out. Um, if you ever have something that starts creating like a smooth line or an awkward uh, slope to your layout, you then have to go in and make that change. You have to like re-rag that paragraph. Okay, now, all right. Um, always turn off your hyphenation. Never have your um, text hyphenated, all right? So under your paragraph right here is hyphenated. So you wanna make sure you always have that off. There's no reason when you're doing any kind of page layout, should you ever have anything hyphenated, all right? All right. Now this, all right, so <clears throat> in this case, um, I want to have a price inside of um, a box. So what you would not want to do is have your text um, sitting on in one box and then having another box drawn behind it. All right, so you want to you want to try and make it all as one. Now the problem is by default, the text always sits on the top, right? So if we were to change this to white and then center it, and then change the text box to black, you can see the text always goes right to the top. Um, and you, you know you can't simply just create a return because now that may be too harsh of a space, right? So what you do, is you hit Command B to bring up this uh, text frame option box, and you can see here the um, the vertical alignment is to the top by default. If we hit Center, now you can see that that drops down into the middle of that text box. All right, uh, there are many typefaces that you can see here. It looks a little little strange because it's a little bit more than half. Um, you can then come in here and um, basically move it up just a little bit, um, use it one or two points, and then you're in the true center of that text box. All right, all right, um, all right, so now returns for um, your paragraph. So, so ideally, you know, if you just had everything, let me put this back to zero, if you wanted to have just a full return after every paragraph, that's totally fine. Um, especially if you have just one column, you know that space is totally acceptable. The one thing that you can't or you have to watch out for is if you end up having a very tight layout, you need to make sure the space um, between par paragraph to paragraph is less than the space between the two columns. All right. So this would be an issue. This is way too close for this kind of size. So what you can do is instead of having a full return, you can have everything selected. And then up here, you have this option to change the spacing for every new paragraph. So you can see just by adding this, it gives enough space to show the eye. When you get to this point, you now have a new paragraph going on. And the spacing, except for countries right here, um, is less than that gap. All right. So then that is one way that you control um, how big of a space you want um, from paragraph to paragraph. All right. All right. Um, done, done. And then. Yes, text wrap. All right, so I think the only other thing that we went over um, last class was a text wrap. So when you bring in, where is that? Um, this, there it is. 
So here's this illustration. All right, so everything you bring in. So this here was um, different options for um, how you would clip out. So in this, this photo here, I wanted to clip out this cup. So in Photoshop, um, we went through um, just like what we went through before and use a pen tool um, and then um, clipped out the um, cup using the pen tool in the path and then you save that path um, so right here you can see here's my file and then let me pull up this all right so here's my path and after you finish clipping out the path, you want to go up to clipping path. And then you just simply select, instead of none, you select that path. All right. So then when you save that as an EPS file and bring it in, it removes the background. The background is still there. You just saw like when we opened it up in um, Photoshop that image is still there the other option that we actually did for project 2 is you create that path and then isolate the item away from what was there and save it as a PDF with no background both ways are going to give you the exact same thing the difference is how you have InDesign interact with that image so in this case this image has nothing there's no background to it it is what it is we bring it into on top of this, and I want to push the text away from this cup. So you go to text wrap, you hit the third option, and you can see right now it pushed all the text away from the square. And then you want to click on the type and then detect edges. This will find the edges of the uh, photo, and then you push the text away. All right, so you can see now the type doesn't go around. If we do a justify type, you can see more clearly that line of text going away from the image. All right. For the other image, if you have um, if you decide to go with the, the path and saving it as an EPS, you would click the third option. And then in here, you have this option that shows up, the Photoshop path. Clicking that, will pull in the exact same path of what you had created in Photoshop. All right, both ways are perfectly the exact same. There's no difference. The only difference is you end up keeping the, the path that you had selected, path one in Photoshop. That's the only difference, or detect edges. All right, both ways are gonna give you the exact same end result, all right? Same thing with um, this for an illustrator. Um, you can see we have an issue because of the multiple um, groups of items. So right now, the only option is this. So this also becomes a little bit difficult if you want to use illustration files for um, a text wrap. Let me pull in another piece here. I think I did this so you can see. All right, so this being only one item, once you hit this, you can see it doesn't go make a square, right? It instantly starts going around that one item. Because this has multiple items, it's using the group and you will only be able to do a square. So what you have to do is, this is kind of um, not awesome. You ungroup everything and then add your texture app and then it works the issue with that is obviously now if i want to move this around you can see how annoying this is going to be to move it around all right but it is doable um all right so that that is all we did for the last class um we still have about um what 10 11 other things that we need to go over uh today in class at the beginning of class 
Um, but yeah, that is it. So I will see you all later and have a good day.